So welcome everybody to the December 3rd episode of MVP Office Hours. It's great to see all of you. We had some minor technical difficulties, but I think we're back on track. If something happens, our sincere apologies. Um, as always, we are all available, myself, Joy, and Dale via Twitter and MVP Office Hours uh, uh, direct. So feel free to use those as well as MVP Office Hours at gmail.com. However, as we always like to say, use the success community for questions. It's the best way to get all of us involved in the solutioning. So um, that's your best starting point, but feel free to reach out to us at those other uh, uh, direct addresses. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of it, everybody. I, I'm happy to report I got my uh, booster, but it's killing me, so. Uh. All right. <laughs> yeah, um, all right, so. Uh, all events from Salesforce are available from the Waffle on Trailhead. Those are all of the paths there at the top right to find anything that's run by Salesforce or the success community or the or uh, live webinars and, and everything else. But most importantly are for us are the community-led events. Um, Automation Hour is uh, scheduled for the hour after this meeting. Uh, Nana Greg is going to be on uh, talking about some cool stuff. So if you've got another hour after this one, please join there. Um, Dreamforce to you, New York is coming up shortly next Thursday, I believe, and the session manager is available. So another great way to get some um, uh, live-ish Dreamforce content. Uh, check that out. Cactus Force, Fire Ed, Dream, and it's all this Dreaming are all scheduled for the next couple months. Keep an eye on those uh, virtual or in person. They'll keep updating the sites. And make sure that you're a member of all the appropriate groups. Uh, the next slide has the normal uh, information about us and uh, can I make that move? I don't think I can make that. Wait, can you jump ahead? Oh, you lost her. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you. Uh, first and third of the month is always our uh, MVP office hours. Portuguese is last Thursday. Uh, and remember, you don't need to speak Portuguese to join Carlos and that group. Do some great things as well. Uh, feel free to join uh, on the next slide, we talk a little bit about, like I just said, to use the success community for all of your questions and interactions. There's a lot of smart people that are members of this group, and so you don't have to wait for the every other Friday conversation, and you certainly don't have to wait for Dale and Joy and myself to respond. Um, the, the, the world is your oyster post there. Speaking of MVPs, how many MVPs have we got on today? One, two, three, four, five. It's a trick question. There's 18 MVPs on today. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that you don't, shouldn't think about who are the MVPs in your life, whether it's, uh, there's no size, there's no, there's no uh, uh, finish line. If people are impactful to you and your career or to your community or to your, your work or to just what makes life better as far as a Salesforce professional, MVP office, or sorry, MVP nominations are still open. Today is the last day. Please, please, please take a minute to think about someone who's important to you and has made a difference and, and nominate them. Um, it's, it's important. So that said, today's the last day. I think it's open until midnight, but I'm not certain. Midnight, what time zone, Squire? That is an awesome question. I was just looking I, at it. And it I thought I saw it's midnight of your local time zone. Why don't we all just plan on getting it done by 6 p.m. today and we'll be fine. Cool. Unless you're on the other side of GMT. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll take Dale. Normal rules of every Zoom. We've done this a thousand times. No need to beat it to death. But remember, we are recording. If you can't display something on the screen when you're going through a question, keep that in mind. We prefer to use a sandbox. We prefer to, use, prefer to see obfuscated data. But you can't share or you don't want to be recorded. Sorry. Well, uh, and if, if things do get super gnarly and we need to edit something out, I have learned how to use iMovie if we absolutely have to, like, you know, <laughs> a big black spot over it or chop out someone going on a rant or, you know, whatever it might be. But I've, I've figured out iMovie and without the help of a teenager. That's what's most Ooh. impressive. I know. Now Any, show don't show your production org if you don't have to. And as always normal zoom stuff stay on mute if you're not talking announce yourself if you want to share the door is open for sharing if it helps with your question please do that and let's just all 
find our way to the solutions. So uh, the, the list of links has not changed, I don't think, since the last time we met. Uh, but there's some pretty good ones out there. And, and I think it's probably important if, if you are someone who has a library of Google links in your bookmarks and you think something's important that everyone should be aware of, feel free to post that and we'll get it on the list. Um, there's a lot of really good information that people rely on every day and don't even know it's out there. Um, actually, but, uh, actually, I want to know if you have that list of links because I have some ideas for you. you okay. Have, talk to me. DM me. Joy Share wants, to, Joy wants to be uh, inundated with chats. Just <laughs> if you, yeah, if you have that like list of links that you think is like good for other people, I want to hear about it and I'll, I'll let you know what I have in mind. Cool. I think, oh, that's, here we got Todd. Are we gonna, are we ready to move on? Are we ready? Well, uh, yeah, I think that's everything. There was a couple of emails, I think from last week and a post that are in the slide deck too, but um, Todd and Andrew both had items today as well. Wait, hold on. So we don't need to do anything with slide eight. We're not following up on community stuff. I missed it, sorry. I didn't realize there was a slide eight. That's my bad. Did you just create that deal? <laughs> no, I do vaguely remember Christine's post though, but I don't remember when it was. Oh uh, yeah, it was, uh, well, the link's right there. Uh, hold on. So um, is Christine on? Christine, 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 Christine. All right, well, we'll, we'll talk about it real fast. Um, can someone help me with the need for a validation rule? The scenario is that we only want four profiles to be able to change the name of an account. Um, I feel so, like I'm doing this. So, so Steve Mo commented with a, a big old case formula, a case statement formula. Um, I then jumped in with, or you also implement a formula checkbox field that says if the running user is one of those four profiles, then true. And then the validation rule is if name is changed and false. So whatever is easier to manage, but there's a couple of different ways to skin that cat. But unfortunately, account name, object name, any object name field. You're, if you have edit capabilities on the object, you can't make the name field read only. So you gotta, you gotta do some trickeration to, to keep it from changing. Yeah, so Christine, if you are checking this out, follow up with that post, because it sounds like you got some good, uh, good stuff. And there was a post from Joanne. That was uh, two, uh, yeah, two or three weeks ago. Um, the, uh, she had asked about, uh, deleting old code. I don't think she was able to join us. And I just wanted to see if she was here today that we could circle back to it. Um, there were a lot of questions and not a lot of answers during that conversation. So. Uh, All right, Joanne, come back and visit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, really quick. I want to go back to Christine's uh, item because I think her uh, validation rule for that check echoed with it's something that we just started implementing. So a lot of times people struggle with record locking without using approval workflows. And something we've implemented that is, it seems really obvious, but it's not. If you create a validation rule that just says, do I have this custom permission and is the record in a certain status? Every time you try to save it, no matter what, it'll throw that error. So you don't have to, like I've seen people write validation rules with checking, you know, a 15 fields or like checking lots of this was changed and that was changed kind of logic. But if you just have a customer permission that says I can edit accounts and assign it to a person, and then you have the validation rule say, if, if I don't have that permission set and you, if you, maybe there's a status or something that affects how well you could or can't, that's all it takes. It'll lock down the whole record from an editing perspective. It's super slick and it felt a lot like what she was trying to do, but this was more specific to a field. So anyway. Just wanted to throw that out there. It's very, it's very handy because I don't know how many of you have ever tried to deal with a record lock just because something happened, but not slap an approval process on top of it. It's, it's not fun. So, all right. Anyway, that's it. All right. So Christine's wrapped up, and Joanne B. We've kind of wrapped up, and so we're going to go into slide nine, Squire, where we had mentioned during our previous call. Um, yep. We. Have do we have Todd on? We do have Todd on. Todd, what's I am your dog's here. name? What's your dog's name? Zaina. Zaina. Z-A-N-A. -A. We will be making our first therapy dog visit next week, Wednesday. Okay. We passed our tests. 
Exciting. So, yep. What I wanted to follow up with today is that last session, I asked if there was any way to keep emojis out of text fields. Oh, that's right. Yeah, well, <laughs> as it so happens, um, I finally hit the right search criteria and I'm just posted the link to the chat. Wonderful document and the links in there are invaluable also. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna share my screen today. I think I can just do this in the post, but here's the validation formula. I know it looks ugly, but if you actually put it out and make it wider, it does kind of make sense. Um, the person who put that post together came up with all the little codes for emojis. Um, the only change I had to make, you'll notice there's ranges and there's one in there. It used to be, it said U2000 through U3300. That range also included bullet points. Ah. Uh. Well, our integration software can handle bullet points and a lot of our reps use them. So all I did is I went in and modified it to exclude two numbers from that range. Was there a directory with all of the emojis and the codes? Uh, I believe so. In one of the links in that document, yes. It gives you pictures and numbers for every emoji. Luckily, he also put together the regex. So I just copied and pasted into my validation rule. Amazing, amazing. So like I said, I just happened to hit the right search criteria and up it popped this time. So there's a solution. Wow. Well done, Todd. Well done. So more importantly, is your error message that the Batman slapping Robin gift that says, don't do that? <laughs> Good idea. I'll have to add that, Dale. Make sure it has all the emojis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fill up that phone. <laughs> Don't thank me, just pay it forward. <laughs> you can't use any of these. No, no, no. Bad. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. I like irony. Okay. <laughs> Andrew, is Andrew on? Andrew? 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 Present. Bueller. What do you got for it? Can I share my stuff? Share my screen? Please. Go ahead. Let me stop sharing. Or did someone stop sharing for me? Perfect. <laughs> so what I'd like to have happen, what I'm trying to do is anytime someone creates this sort of case, this case record type, the case creator gets a direct message via Slack. So we've got the connector and everything installed. From the way I understand it, you need to reference these message destination IDs. And I think the best way to do it is from a flow. So this is my flow, but I cannot get it to work unless you have a simpler way to do what I'm trying to do, if that makes sense. And you're sure that those IDs exist in your sandbox versus like production or another environment? Yep, this is all sandbox. So okay. Slack is up to sandbox. So in the flow itself, I think you can see here the issue is it's not picking up the destination ID. And I don't know if it's because it's cross object or if you can do that on the get records part. Uh, well, there's um, it's an error before that one. So the get record find ID mm -hmm. says null, record created by name null. Mm -hmm. Is that supposed to be null? No, I mean, ideally, it's the person who created the case. That's what this is. Well, that's just a name, that's not an ID, right? Correct. So it could be that it can't find that. 
So I guess I can set up these metadata, metadata types any way I want. So the label is a full name. I could have the label be something else. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, 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 would you jump back to the flow? So I, th I think what's happening is that the the label is equal to the name, but so what I'm trying to find the idea of is the case yeah. creator versus I mean your it's destination not, ID. It's, it's not able to find the the metadata record based on what you're passing to it, which makes me think what, Stuart, that's what you were kind of saying is like, that error is starting you off by saying, whoever created that record isn't in the list of metadata. Can you, you could assign that value to a variable in a node and see that it's actually passing something in like almost like you create a debug basically prior to the find that just says assign record created by name to a variable and see what it thinks it's assigning. Because it might be that your the what you're passing in isn't what you're actually searching for. Like it, it, it looks like it is on paper, but it might not be. Like just create a variable like username or something. It doesn't really matter. We're just te testing the debug. Be a new resource. Yep. Resource type variable. Yep. Uh, I wouldn't use name. That's usually sometimes that's a protected uh, value. You do like var test or or something. Yeah. Like just just something something to hold a value. Text. text is, pro is probably yeah, appropriate. Probably text. It. Yeah, text is good. Because even if it's passing an ID, you'll, it'll put it in as a string. So cool. All right. That's and you it. need to be able to be available for input, right? Just really, right before you leave that screen, raise your hand if you always just check both because it's safer. Cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, and then in the value, oh, you want to assign that uh, that same string. So like the created by. So easier to copy and paste, isn't it? Right, and then debug that. Oh, yeah, sorry, you have to do, you have to do those saves and stuff. Oh, yeah. So when you debug before, did you pass a case into it? No. Because that error, that was a debug error. So I mean, uh, you have a case that you can pass the ID into so it knows what it's referencing at the start of the debug. Give me this ID number. Yep. So debug this again. And then you have to say for case, yep. Thank you. 
Cool. Is this new? I haven't done a debug on a flow for a few weeks. I don't think so. Because I don't remember these accordion drop downs being there before. That came out with this release. Well, then it is new. Thank you, Todd. Yeah. Well, I thought it was new. New recent with this release. Depends on how you define new. Recent new. release is a couple months old now. <laughs> say, right? I'm already looking at the next release. This is old stuff mm. now. <laughs> yeah. So see how it's not. It doesn't. Yeah. For some reason, it doesn't know who created that case. Can't find the name. Um, do you need to do a get records before you do this variable so that it knows what it's grabbing to assign to that uh, variable? Yeah, it should be context aware because of the trigger, right? Well, it should be in the dollar record, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's got the case there, right? My question might be stupid, but it is the person that created that case active? Yep, that's me. Okay. <laughs> Just... I mean, if there's a, this seems sort of like a convoluted way to do it. If there's a simpler way, I mean, it seems like a pretty simple request, at least in my head. And again, anytime somebody changes a case or creates a case or edits an IT case, they get a direct message via Slack. And And this is running in after save right not before Let's see. Or updated. okay yes correct is it before save Do, uh, just because we can always set it back, like copy your record type value and have it trigger every time. It could be, uh, that shouldn't be, a, that shouldn't matter either. It shouldn't matter either. Never mind. Don't do that. Okay. I can do that. So it knows its record context and the debug, does, we know the debug can see it because we searched it, but it doesn't know the, the created by. Maybe, I don't know, can you go, so it's starting in this metadata, well, what I'm trying to do is on a case object. Can you do cross objects like that? Yeah, absolutely you can. You're just, you're just passing an ID into that label as a criteria. I mean, the, 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 I, the fact that you aren't able to pass the name to a variable to start this off is where it all breaks down. It's, it's not uh. this node. Okay. It, it's, it can't find a record in, in the metadata table with a null for a label value. That's what that first thing is that Stoop called out, uh, the assignment test, where it says var test is equal to created by dot name. So var test is equal to null because it doesn't know what that value is. And so when you try to search for it in the next node, it doesn't exist either. Oh, you gotcha. shouldn't have to do a get to, to find that value. That's what's so weird. Can you look at the case record and see created by? Okay. There it is. Can you create another new case and try it with that? So I'm just thinking.
riveting riveting radio right now. A bunch of people quizzically looking at each other on a <laughs> eight by eight screen. <laughs> oh, I have the process on. That's why it's in this not active. And that's a good sign. It's basically telling you. Wait, I'll leave that error up really quick. Uh, yeah, you may have a previous flow that's still active. I think this is the one. Interesting. Which I thought was shouldn't be be active. And that one's not even active, right? It's the, is it the other one? There's like an interview open? Is that what you're suggesting, Tom? No, I'm saying there's probably a version 8 that's still active. This is version 9 on the screen right now. When you're working on one, the other one stays active. Oh, right. gotcha. Been here and done that. Still waiting on the t-shirt. <laughs> I think you're going to have to design that one yourself. Okay, that's nine, that's eight. All right, so you got a new IT cage created by me. Yeah, debug. Still doesn't like that. Mine's not active, I don't think. What's that? I see the activate button. Does it need to be active? Well, the debug still works whether it's active or not. Got it. Why doesn't it know it created by me? That's what's bizarre. And you should not have to look up the record can you pull in a can can you do an assignment on another field on that case um, just to another basic variable to see if it's something to do with that created by id i like that so, so like last that. modified id so in, or, that or, same in that same assignment just change it to any something else it's just a, a text field it doesn't matter what you put in there mm. does that make sense is that for me yeah so oh, open up no. that test assignment and instead of trying to assign name, assign something else from the record. Maybe the name of the record, just it doesn't really matter at all. So. Well, I would do the ID. Okay. I mean, we're just, we just want to see if it will assign anything, right? Does it matter? Mm, I would do the ID. Yeah, count ID. Now keep going count down lower in the list and get past the related items. There should be a case ID somewhere. It's probably just ID, right? There it is. Yeah, it just should be ID. This one? Yep. yep, that's it. And then try to debug again. Yeah, probably had to say it's safe. Got further. Uh, oh, so that's it. It doesn't. You can't find the case. Can't form. find the ID. So is there? I'm just curious. You don't have anything in place that suggests that, like, a user can't access other user records, right? Like, you don't have users as private or something in your org. Uh, no, I don't believe so. I mean, we can poke around if there's. You have something to reference in mind, but pretty sure. Our sharing model is all open. I'd be tempted to flip that back to getting just the ID without the name. Get the created by ID. Come up, basically come up one level. Are we talking about on this? Yes. 
So it's still on the case. Correct. So created by and, Nope, not on grab the second one. The one that the, the one that the second yes, one. That yeah. one. That's the one. The actual value, not the relation. Save that and see what that does. I'm trying to figure out if it's a problem getting the name or if it's a problem getting that ID. Did you pass the, the case in there again? Just debug again. Don't oh, need the case down below. There it is. So it got the ID, but it can't get the name. Got the ID, but it can't find the name. What's in the metadata in your records? He's using the actual name. I mean, like I said, I can change it to anything, so. Yeah, I mean, the, the trick there is that tracking IDs is never a good idea. Like hard coding ID, even in custom metadata, is never great. But now I, I want to know why you can't get to the name of the contact. You can get the ID. You should be able to get the relationship to that name, but it won't let you, huh? Is Sign there it. a full name or a first name or something like that? Yeah, there were, I saw all the name options in there. I mean, that, that'd be the next thing I would try is go ahead and go through to the next level down and see if you can get the, a different name field, first name, last name, or full name. I don't know what's in this object. And Andrew, can you go back to the flow and, and open up the, um, the start of it again? It just... Okay. Something something caught my eye when you when you ran it the last time that made me think that it it was creating it. Uh, That's possible. There's an option to run or update. Like like it hadn't it hadn't hadn't saved anything yet. So I'm wondering if if it's just not there yet, like that, that value hasn't been updated because it, it has the creator ID. So it's, it's done something. I like the idea of trying to pick a different field. So go down to the next level on your ass assignment. Like other than name, you mean like go to go other to than name? ID. Yeah. To pick yep. a different dollar record created by next record so created by one yep, yep. and then, and then name, pick another name anything else something else something besides name like let's just do last name maybe or first name or something like that right perfect last name Hey, Andrew, debug that again and choose updated in the debug options. The yeah. radio button. As, as if the, the record was created. That was the thing that I saw. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Thank you, Todd. Yeah, I was like, so now just hit run. Weird there. Also, doing that allows you to change field values on the fly so you can test. So go. There, there it is. It There's is the last it. name. So the debugging with create, this will never work with create. Yeah. Because it you, hasn't been, this is. It didn't save it, anything. Yes. So if we, if, so does the find ID work the way it is now that you've got it on update? It's fine. So I was wondering if you go put, did it go you, this you time? You just gotta scroll down farther in the module. You don't have to change, like oh. this test thing doesn't matter to you at all right now. The, the find is already looking for name, right? 
find is looking for the full name. Okay. So that that node should still be debugging the way you had it before. Now that you made the change that Stuart and and Todd just recommended, so go down to that module that that step. It's still null. That's the one that was open right there that you were just on that find ID. Yeah. So it's it's the dot name piece that's the gap even after create, right? Appears to be yes. I think we're real close, but I also want to make sure that we don't run out of time. This is going kind of long. Um, the, <laughs> Sorry. No, no, don't apologize at all. It's, it's valuable. I, I just want to make sure we give everybody a chance here. Um, so if we know name doesn't work, no matter what that debug setting is, then what's the next recommendation? That he concatenate first name and last name into a string and then search for it? And one other question on, on your metadata, mm -hmm. the values you actually have in the records. So, I mean, that is uh, this. Yeah, the destination ID. But again, I can okay. rename these anything since it sounds like I'm going to have to add them. Anyway, I can, I mean, we can search on any field, I guess. It's just the case creator. Why are you might have had the right idea? Just get the last name or the first name and the last name and concatenate them with a space and see if that would work. Okay. Or an interim test would be to change one metadata where it's just the last name and try searching, querying just on the last name rather than the full name. Just different ways of parsing the data apart and finding the problem. Is is name? one of those weird fields like address where it doesn't really exist. And so you're not able to actually get it with the lookup, even though it exists no. as a field. No, nope. It is a fully living and breathing field. If you have access to the object, you have access to the name field. Okay. Can you change the name on your record? to just be the last name and see if it if it matches. Does that make sense? Because that's what we looked up was last name and then change the flow to pull the last name. But we need to change this to the correct. And then try to have the flow look up last name. I'm gonna play really dumb and admit I've been multitasking through a lot of this, but are we sure those IDs are exactly 18 characters and not 17 or 19? It, it's the it's not the lookup that's failing. It's a valid question when we get there, but it doesn't even it doesn't know what to look up yet. So it's like it's it's looking for a null. Once we can pass an, an actual value into the variable to search, that's gonna be the, the next piece of it. Gotcha. It sees Burnett, and then it looks up and finds a record called Burnett. So that's good. Found at that time. Yep. But now it can't do that, which might be what Dale's talking about. Right, but we got one step further now. Yep. That's progress. So maybe do it. Um, was it Squire or somebody mentioned before? Look up first name, look up last name, concatenate them together. 
or use those two fields and can create a variable to concatenate them together. If you, in fact, you want to have first name, or you use the name. It would need to be an assignment sort of. Yeah. Oh, I think I follow what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, that's it, kind it, of a workaround. Uh -huh. What is the new error? Just curious, because that you're going to have to bump into that then too. So it, it can't find ID underscore number underscore C because it hasn't been set. So the there must be something in the Slack post logic that also doesn't know what the assignment is. So can can I um, offer because again we are running out of time and we do have one more question in the queue. Could we do you have enough? Do you think to go back and and poke and then bring it back to us in two weeks and show us that you you won or do you, do you feel like we're you're still lost i'm definitely further along than i was cool all right well and if, and if you solve it and you just can't make it in two weeks let us know in in the forum like how you how you fixed it because i mean it's this was valuable i had a lot of people scrunching their eyes for the last 20 minutes so <laughs> it's valuable that's good just one last note, Andrew. I didn't notice. Are you getting all fields when you do that find, or are you picking certain fields? I was picking the first one. Would you recommend? On, on the next one, on the find ID. It's only the first. Would you first record. All? Choose fields and let Salesforce do the rest. You may not be getting your ID field. I always set that to automatically store all fields because it's only going to get what it needs in the flow anyway. Yep. It's deceptive the way it works. It says automatically store all fields, but if I only use two in that flow, it's only going to return two. So I would switch that and head on down the road from there. Finish, right? There it was. Is that it? Yeah. So the case, the record itself was limited by columns. So yep, it was missing a column. Start, it was missing a <laughs> column it needed for the Slack post just so easy it just took 20 mvps in 20 minutes and solved and we're all smarter for it so we all slap <laughs> virtual high fives thank you thank you i will go on mute and let you get to the next one you guys have a great weekend thank you same to you brie you still with us or we lose you i'm here yay <coughs> excuse me um sorry my camera got stolen by a child so um <laughs> I will the screen. So I am also having a flow error that is working when I debug it, but not when it actually runs. It's a scheduled flow. Um, so we've had we have a, all of our data comes in essentially from a different system every night. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's been broken, just like everything has been broken for like two months. So I wasn't worried about this for a while. And then we started getting data again because it wasn't finding records. And I was like, well, no new records are being created. So I just didn't worry. Then we started getting data and now it's still saying that. And I, um, this error doesn't tell me much. What I looked up on Google said it may be a limit error. And I am concerned because I feel like when I initially created this flow, I was running into a limit error because we have, I don't know how many deposit records, hundreds of thousands. Um, and so I used the created date to narrow it down and that helped a lot. But now because everything broke with our sync, everything has like created dates that aren't really accurate anymore. Like they, all the records got like newly recreated essentially. Um, so, and I don't know for sure that it's a limit issue. It could be something else too. I can also show you the actual flow. Um, so when I debug, it's working, and I don't know if, I'm not sure what the difference is, <laughs> aside from maybe quantity. Uh, so it seems to keep getting stuck um, on this get records. <clears throat> so I'm not sure if there's something else I can do to narrow down what it's searching through. Is it one of those weird math combinations where even though it doesn't seem like very many records, the combination of loop on a loop is hitting the, the, the limit 
kind of in that backwards way. I, I, I couldn't see enough of the module to see what was going on. Um, so like which you, part? Like, so where do, it kicks off at the top and it does what? So, so there's um, a get, and then it does another get, and then it does a loop? Uh, then it does an assignment, and then it does a get, and then it does a loop. And then there's a couple, bunch more gets, and then another but, assignment. But the failure is before the loop even hits, is that right? Correct, yeah. And these ones, these these gets don't tend to be very high in, in number, so I don't... What was the message at the top of the debug log? Might have been on the other tab you were on. There was something about a data mismatch. Yeah, that's what I was seeing too uh, in, in here, right? Where it's. Correct. If you go to the top of that, an error processing mm. and converting between data types. Are you trying to compare numbers to strings or anything like that, possibly? Yeah, I can go back through and double check all that. Um, though I did um, these fields, these two, the open date month and open date year are formula fields that I created on the deposit object. And I did double check that it's a formula that spits out a number. And I double checked here, these are numbers. Um, I can go back through every thing else, but That, that's just the filter, but not the assignment. Isn't that where you get the error, Todd, is when you try to do the assign? Yeah, I'm not sure. One thing that catches my attention over on the right side under assignment, add balances to deposit actual. Deposit actual dollars has a dollar sign in it. Is that intended to be a string or a number? This deposit actual dollar should be a a monetary amount currency okay yeah, there we go thank you <laughs> all right that's just caught my attention there was a dollar sign in the debug log over there yeah so here i'm just trying to get records within a certain date range essentially um but then from them i'm pulling uh currency amount but i can't um yeah, that one's currency to currency. Those ones should be quantities. So in the log on the right there under the accordions, which step is actually failing? Um, it is this one, get records. So it's, yeah, I can um, get out of the debug. It's not failing <laughs> in when I debug. I, so I, I thought uh, that it might be an issue with um, between data types. A coworker looked and suggested that. So I double checked everything. I tried something a little different with one. Debugged and it worked and I was like, cool, I fixed it. And then I ran it just to be sure. And I got the same error I've been getting, which is this email that I, for some reason, get four of every time it runs. If you click the link there at the top, does it fail or does it run fine? That is a good question. Let's try this again. So yeah, fail it runs with time. the fault, but. But it didn't fail on debug. Now you've got a debug error. Yeah, it doesn't tell you much. Oh, it failed to find any records. I guess where I was headed with my comment, at least you can get it to error now because it actually runs it like it did when it ran on the schedule. Okay. So you're outside of debug now in a way. Getting 
getting back to things that catch our eye, step four, open date year is a number, not a, as opposed to a value for a date. I don't know if that's going to trip you or not. That, yes. Yeah, so that's the one that we found. And I did double check that this open date year is a formula field that, that yeah. uh, returns a number. So. Okie dokie. Yeah, and it seems like if it faults, so I added a fault line, but then it just, it doesn't seem to want to get any records after that point. And it's the same error. Would you open the get, that get records node really quick again? The one that's erroring? Yeah. Uh, would you scroll up just a little? Sorry, what would you say? Just scroll up a little bit. My screen oh. is super tiny. It feels like I'm staring at everybody's faces. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. I'm just curious if you were to if in that get records for that like the the error the the log that is or the node that's failing if you were to write a query with developer console looking for all of those values like see if that works at all because it might tell you exactly which column is causing you the headaches yeah okay um because you should I'll be able to just try. write that write that out and and you, you know what values you're passing into it and then by iterating over that query, you might be able to figure out. Like, I like the I like to call it to the the year with a comma in it. Some that one that's something I think people see a lot is just unexpected punctuation being passed into a value string or something along that line, or looking for decimals when there aren't, or vice versa. So, um, the the query itself might also tell you a little bit more about the data, um, not the query, but the data that's coming back. Okay. Especially if they recreated oh, all the right. records, who knows what they did to them coming back in. Yeah, it's a it's a real cluster. So yeah. it's anybody's guess. It, it actually that's a good comment too. Like it might be worth running a. I'm sure you've done this, but run a quick report of of a subset of the brand new record and just spot check them to see if the, anything you know is throwing you off. If all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, why do I have dollar signs in this number field? It's not never been a currency field before, or something like that. Um, yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> Yeah, because I have looked at that that new records are being created, um, but I didn't check all the different fields that I was referencing here. So, I'll do you have that too. do you have the old records that worked in the past as well as new records, or is it only new records? Well, um, I mean, it's a, like it, technically nothing stopped coming. We we switched uh, we have we switched a core system, so the the data being sent in all had to be reformatted so in theory it's supposed to be matching to the existing data but there's like a lot of weird things happening yeah i mean i think what comes to mind too is even something as odd as like if a formula is failing you might be expecting to get a, a value and instead you're getting an na or something like that so it probably yeah, wouldn't be more like to poke through new records and just make sure they do look like the way you expected them yeah pull those fields into a report yeah, I mean, and then and then the query side by side should be able to tell you like, oh yeah, but, well, and hopefully it'll tell you that there's something wrong. So, okay, um, awesome, thank you. Keep, keep it posted. And Melissa, I think all of us would love to talk about CMTD enhanced related lists. So let's, let's please come back with questions or whatever you work on if you and uh, and Andrea solve it. We'd love to talk about that. Thanks, we'll do. It's that time. Oh, but it's so much more fun to keep rambling on and on and on. I know. What time, I know. What time is it, Joy? I don't know.
don't have it saved. It's time to go. It's time to go. You can't oh. all that good stuff. You said where'd it go? I lost it, Stu. Huh? I where I have go? a com I have a comment to make about something that Bree said, which was um, doing some sort of automations based on the last modified date. At at our org, um, we have a couple objects where they say uh, uh, we want to add a field or add add some integrations to a field. They said, no, you can't because uh, that's going to wreck up the modified date. And we do all of our uh, all of our processes based on the last modified date. Oh, no. To which I said, "You're stupid. Don't <laughs> don't base your business process on last modified date because there are a lot of things in Salesforce that touch that that you can't control." The last modified buy and last modified date are not things that you should even be looking at, in my opinion. Um, you should hide those and you shouldn't even worry about them. If, if you need to track something based on the last time it was modified, you should set up a unique date field that is for that specific business process. If it's for some legal retention or for something that you are trying to track, do not track it based on the last modified date, people. <laughs> yeah, I can second that because we have a lot of automation based on created date and now it's all messed up. In fairness, I didn't build any of the existing automation. We inherited a mess, but. It's a great honesty, point, Stu. Honesty. honesty. Yep. It's a great point. <laughs> yeah. Just and if you want to report, you can report to say, this is the date that one of these business specific fields were changed without having to use history as well when you do something like what we're just talking about i love it i love it <laughs> all right i think we're going to tap out um I, I again i'm going to apologize to andrew for cutting him off i think that was a really good conversation that i hope you're able to solve and and brie and everybody um, melissa everybody come back in two weeks because we'll want to hear more and talk about more um but in the meantime Everyone stay cool, stay safe, submit those MVP nominations. Um, you're the best. We got to go. Bye, friends. <laughs> Bye, friends. Bye, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>